The image of a shepherd tending a flock of sheep goes back centuries, but lately it's gotten quite a modern update. In many parts of the country, agricultural land is now home to the massive panels of the booming solar energy industry. And that land remains suitable for grazing farm animals, which in turn control the growth of vegetation around the panels. Solar grazing, as it's known, is just one example of the agrosolar industry, a growing space which combines the old and new to enhance both the economy and the environment. You ready, Reg? Away to me. It is a Border Collie's dream come true. Six acres of land calling for Reggie to do what she was born to do. Oh, girl, Get up, Reg. Get up, up. Herding a flock of 32 sheep under the watchful eye of her owner. Good girl, good girl. Hi, sheep. Dan Finnegan. One well-trained Border Collie like Reggie is worth five full-time employees. Wow. Between the sheep and the dog, I'm just a driver. Here we go. Dan is more than just a driver. He's a third generation sheep farmer in southeastern Massachusetts. And while this isn't his family farm, it is Dan, Reggie, and the flock's office for the day. Together, they make up Solar Shepherd, working with large energy companies across the U.S. using the sheep to graze sites like this one, which host solar arrays. In Dan's words, they're in the landscaping business. Did people think you were crazy or at not? At the very beginning, at yeah. the very beginning, the conversations were centered around, you, you'd like to do what on our solar array? Yeah. Now that's not so much the case. Good girl, lie down. Dan started Solar Shepherd five years ago. Why do you think it's been embraced so easily now, or at least so well now? Well, first and foremost, the sheep do a great job. Excellent workers. They, they're wonderful <laughs> workers. They do a great job of managing the vegetation on the solar array. They fit underneath the solar panels. The old-fashioned way of managing these sites would be to come in with a crew of five or eight guys on zero-turn mowers with the bulk of their time spent running weed whackers underneath the solar panels to get all that vegetation that grows under there. You know, a site like this, you'd probably send an eight-man crew for three days each time they mow it, at least three or four times a year. Time and money. Time and money. There's also the environmental impact. According to a recent study, if all sheep in the U.S. were shifted to agrosolar farms, the reduction in carbon emissions would be the same as removing 117,000 cars from the road. This field, which Solar Shepherd grazes, is one of 30 owned and operated by National Grid, responsible for providing power to more than 20 million customers in the Northeast. This brings energy into the grid. Steve Werner is the president for National Grid New England. What was it about AgriSolar? that attracted National Grid. It's an interesting solution to a problem that we have, right? So we, we installed large scale solar for residents of Massachusetts. We need to maintain the vegetation, the grass that grows on those properties. We came across this idea and said, hey, this is a win-win. It's cost effective, it's environmentally responsible, it's friendly to the neighbors. And this is just another example of how an area that was agricultural use still can be and also be a generator. Those stacked benefits from solar grazing, especially when it comes to the environment, are exceeding expectations, according to Stacy Peterson. You know, we're seeing sometimes a threefold increase in pollinators. We're seeing three times the amount of birds and bees, bats, butterflies. She's the energy program director at NCAT's AgriSolar Clearinghouse, a government-funded information hub for all things AgriSolar. How much has this industry grown in the last five to 10 years? So much, this is taking off all across the country and all across the world, really. We're there to help you figure out what's best for your area and connect you with the right people that might help you do this if you want this at your farm or if you want this in your community. Solar grazing is just one of many in the agri-solar sphere. On solar sites nationwide, there are pollinators and beekeeping, crops grown, cattle raised, even fish farmed. Peterson says the opportunities appear endless. So this is gonna be a game changer in being able to move forward sustainably. People may not see agriculture and solar as fitting together naturally. 
Why would you say that they maybe do? I think that it is another crop. They're harvesting the sun again. They are providing the crop of energy. And they're doing that in a way that they can sustain their farm. I'm talking to farmers that they're able to pay for their farm for generations. They look at this as a way to be a good steward of the land. It does not come in with a mini mall. It doesn't come in with a residential development. This is something that can be returned completely to agricultural lands. And with the number and size of farms in the U.S. steadily declining over the last 15 years, hey, Lee. Rich, totally here. that may be the relief many have been looking hey, for. Totally. It certainly has been for Dan Finnegan and Reggie. Without the solar operation and the added pasture it brings us, we wouldn't have a sustainable farm. We need this. And I think there are a lot of other farmers in that same boat. When you think about how many animals you need to produce to produce a living, particularly in, in the Northeast here, it takes a lot of acreage to yeah. do that. So the, the 100 acres of solar pasture we have under management, that makes our farm sustainable. If we didn't have that, we, we wouldn't be able to, to continue. So we're producing food, fiber, and energy all from the same acre of land. It's a smarter way to use this land. Mm. I kept sort of looking for, well, what's the negative? Because you start looking, what, and really the hardest thing seemed to be maybe for some of the farmers that upfront cost of if they had to cart some of their sheep around or if some of the planting was different, but it really seems like everybody is getting the win out of this, even if there is some upfront cost in the beginning, you make up for it in so many other ways. Like it incentivized at some point. Certainly, and if you can <laughs> keep your farm or your business going for generations, yeah. that's incentive right there. Mm -hmm.